Welcome, everybody, to the Hustle Culture Podcast, where we profile entrepreneurs as they hustle their way to the top. I'm Ty Roxon, one of your hosts, and a little bit about me is I'm an entrepreneur, uh, I'm a consultant, and I'm also a millennial who's had an interesting path to sort of figuring out his passion. Um, so one of the reasons I really wanted to do this was really to highlight kind of the, the journey that I've gone through by, you know, figuring out what my entrepreneurial path was by also, you know, what it was side hustling or going to school while building a business. And um, the other thing about me is that I'm a culture connector. So I grew up in five countries and four continents. And uh, that's one of the places I met Carlos. What is happening to all of you hustlers out there? I am your co-host, Carlos Gill. And like Tayo, I'm a hustler as well. I like to believe that I've been hustling since, uh, since the day I was born. And uh, my rise, my climb, if you will, um, has been one with many ups and downs, more downs than ups. But in true hustler fashion, we find a way to dust ourselves off and get right back up. I uh, started my career in banking initially after uh, dropping out of high school at the age of uh, 17. And uh, I've worked in both corporate America, where today I run social media for brands, and I've also owned my own business um, as well. So looking forward to chatting with all of you hustlers on a week to week basis. And for this episode, really just want to get to all of you out there, get to know us as your hosts. Absolutely. Um, and as Carl said, we're, we're going to be doing this weekly and then the guests that we'll have will be everyday people like you and me, entrepreneurs who are going through the climb. Carlos and I have unique paths where you know, um, you know, he has this, this journey of how he started in the financial. I started a nonprofit and I started working at 17 and um, I got my way up to the MBA and then had experienced a lot of downs. But through it all, there's always that uh, the way up. So uh, we'll stay tuned for every week when we profile guests who are just highlighting how you can get up and climb back to the top. So let's let's get it started. Uh, what does hustle mean to you, Carlos? Yeah, so for me, hustle is the will and the ability to never give up. It's to persevere. It's to really leverage your passion. For And passion can mean a lot of different things for people. I view passion as really what is inside of you that drives you. What is your end game? What's your goal? How are you going to get there? And it starts with what are you passionate about? And for me, the ultimate definition of hustle is you are so passionate about making something happen that you are going to persevere come hell or high water. And I'll share a story with, with you, Tayo. I know you know a little bit about my background, but for our listeners out there that aren't familiar with our backgrounds, like I said earlier on, I decided to drop out of high school at the age of 17. And it wasn't because I was a bad student, but it was a conscious decision that I had moved around the country quite a bit from the age of 14. And I lived in three different states, Florida, Montana, and in Utah. And at the age of 17, my parents and I, we moved back to Florida. And I was looking at the possibility of going to my fourth high school in four years. And quite frankly, the experience of living in other states was invaluable for me because it really helped me develop my social skills. And you know, imagine being the only Hispanic kid at your high school. Okay, in Montana and in Utah, especially in Utah, where not only was I non-Mormon, but I was Hispanic. So, you know, on your podcast, you always talk about use your difference to make a difference. And at a very young age, I was forced to have to use that cultural difference now on multiple levels, not only culture and race, but also in religion. I had to use that to my advantage and really use that as a way for me to blend it and fit it. And, right. It's all about hustle. You hustle as a kid just to kind of keep up, make friends, get through school. So 17 years old, back to my story, I moved back to Florida and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go to school anymore. At this point, you know, I don't want to go to a fourth high school. I don't want to go through all the motions of making friends again and, you know, that whole process. So I decided to go work. And my first job before I got my GED was working at a shoe store. And I tell you, very early on, making five twenty five an hour. And having to sell, you want to talk about hustle, I had to sell $1,000 worth of product just to get paid 50 bucks. So in a day, if I wanted to make my minimum wage plus at least make $100 in commission, I had to sell $2,000 worth of shoes. 
Okay. That's a lot of hustling. That's a lot of time on your feet. No pun intended. That's a lot of people that you're talking to. But again, I look at those experiences as really what has helped mold me and, and drive me to where I am now at 32. So I spent six years in banking after working in the shoe and retail business. Mm-hmm. In six years in banking, I'm 25 years old. I feel up at the top of my game. I'm working for AIG, which at the time was one of the top banks in the US. And boom, the economy hits, it tanks. And I was laid off, I was out of a job. And really with, with no college education to fall back on, because again, I dropped out of high school, I have a GED, I didn't go to college. I was really, I had no options. And my only option was to either make one of two decisions. You either go up or you go down. And my dad has always told me since I was a little boy, both of my parents have owned businesses, they're entrepreneurial. My dad's always said, in life, you have two options. You either go up or you go down. And it's that simple. And when you have a young family, I got married at a young age, I had kids at a young age, there was no other option but to go up. And I turned to social media and said, you know what? I'm not going to let the recession kick me in the ass. I'm going to do something about it. And I started up Jobs Direct USA. Had no experience running a business, had no experience in the HR, recruiting, or staffing industry. But I leveraged social media for what, what it was back then and what it still is today as a tool to connect people. And I saw when LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook were still very much at the ground level at the infancy stages, I saw these as platforms to be able to connect people and connect recruiters with candidates that were looking for jobs. And you know what, Tayo? I look back almost, what, seven, eight years later, and not only did I spend a four-year period running my own company, which, again, had a lot of ups and downs, went through a lot of financial struggles, persevered, like I said before, that's, for me, perseverance along with passion are the number two key ingredients to hustle, fought through it, and it's led me to a very successful career in brand marketing, where right. today I can say I've worked for four different brands in social media, corporate companies. You know, retail, when dixie save a lot those are known entities in the grocery world. LinkedIn, we all know LinkedIn. And today I work for a company called BMC Software. Um, so again, man, you know, passion and perseverance. Without it, man, I think, uh, you know, <laughs> It's very hard to go ahead and thrive, especially in this day and age. So that's all. Love that's it. that's yeah. me. I'm going to turn it back on you. What does hustle mean to you, my friend? No, I mean, thank no, you for telling the story. Tell the story. Um, so what um, does so hustle what does mean to me? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you hear an echo. You hear an echo? We're good. Okay. So hustle, I mean, hustle to me can be described in three words. It's, it's never give up. All right. So uh, I'll give you my background. I grew up as the son of a, of a diplomat, right? And when, when you're a son of a diplomat in Nigeria, especially, you end up moving around every four years, every four to three to four years. So I was always the minority everywhere I went, and not just in terms of pigmentation, just in the fact that I was not you know, accustomed to that culture. So I would always have to make new friends, knew that, knew that. And that went on up until I was 17. And when I first moved to the States, I, I knew that I needed to stand out in some way. Uh, so I, I, like you, I turned to digital media and I started creating a digital platform. So I, I worked my way up to uh, to a marketing position in, in the nonprofit, and then I, I ended up, you know, getting high enough to be able to to work with the brands locally. I did that for another nonprofit in you know by the time I was nineteen, and by the time I was twenty one, I knew I you know I wanted to I wanted to graduate and sort of do some more marketing type of stuff, really practice my degree. So I got into the sales world and it was not what I expected because, you know, everybody always has that romantic notion of, of what the job is right after college. You know, you graduate, you've got your degree and that you're about to kill it. So I got into this place and I quickly realized that the company culture wasn't something that I jived with. You know, I was someone who was, was used to sort of a lot of activity, but here was a small company where, you know, there were a lot of restrictions, a lot of people you know, telling me what to do and, you know, not necessarily knowing what to do. So I, I uh, made one of the first mistakes that I did was and I stuck in there. So I, I, one of the things with hustle is, is always following your dreams, no matter what. But I, I just tempered down my dreams of entrepreneurship and said, no, I'm just going to stay here. It's the right thing to do. I got my degree. I'm not going to do that. I finally got into, I got into a car accident that I shouldn't have survived. And you know, my, it was, it was on the highway, my car, I was on my way to work, ironically. And my car flipped, um, you know, almost flipped over the bridge. It was the highway. It was a three-way accident and nothing happened to me. Um, and that was the first turning point to me. I, I knew 
that right then, you know, there was a reason for me to stay. So I knew that I, I had to really quit. So I made a trip to New York City, one of the cities that I always want to. Um, I always say never give up and always continue your dreams. And then I decided I'm going to move here no matter what, and I'll find the way. My way was to get an MBA. I know that's it's the untraditional way, but that was the only way I could justify it to my parents. I was like, Dad, Mom, I'm moving to New York City, and I'm, I'm going to get my MBA. I don't want you to think I'm doing something else. So fast forward here, I eventually made my way to, to New York City. And then, um, you know, I was doing the school thing. And then again, I was finding, look, I, this is some of the inner voice was telling me I needed to find what I wanted to do. And it had nothing to do with, with a lot of what I was learning. I wanted to do something practical. I wanted to do something that was making an impact. So I, you know, I through a series of events that went through Ariana Huffington, I, I discovered, you know, like I... I'm a, someone that identifies with several countries, several cultures. Why don't I launch a podcast that connects all these people together? So I did that. And to my surprise, the audience started to grow. And I started to grow an audience. And then that just gave me even more confidence to continue uh, to launch a business. Now, this is where everything happens. I always say a first time entrepreneur, good and bad things happen. But I made several mistakes when I was, uh, when I was launching a business. First thing, it's not necessarily a mistake, but I was launching a business while taking full time credit uh, and also working full time as, an, as a, with an internship. So I essentially wasn't sleeping and I was trying to build a team. So that happened. And while I was doing that, I hired all the wrong people. I'm talking about all the wrong people. I hired people because they're my friends. I hired people because they were, you know, I, I felt like they would be, it would be good fits. I didn't even vet them. And then quickly on, I, le I learned that I had to fire all of them or I had to let them go. And that was one of the most difficult times, especially with the friends that I'd made, because, you know, I was, I, you know, I even lost some friends over that. But on the way to you hustle, mentioned, you mentioned that you made mistakes. So was your biggest mistake early on hiring friends? No, it wasn't necessarily hiring friends. It was hiring people because I thought because they were my friends. You know, I didn't check for the qualifications. So during that process, it was a really like rough time. I was like, I was starting to question like, why am I even hustling, doing this job, doing school, trying to run a business? Look, I, I'm just losing people all over the place. I'm not even cut out for this. And um, then last, then the beginning of the year happened when I had to pay. I, I found myself twenty thousand dollars in debt. Right? MBA, anything that you know about MBA, you got to pay a lot of money, and it's it's not. You know, I, I wasn't doing the student loan thing. I was somehow saving money. I was able to save. So I, I had to go back to hustling. Like when I went through college. Yeah. So I have to hustle. So I have to find a way to pay. So while everybody was spending Christmas and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, I, I was coming up with a plan to go to the school to have them pay for me. So I went to once January school started January 5th, I think I once January 5th came. I was I, I stayed out there to January 4th, to January 5th. I was like, I waited out there till the door came on and I said, hey, you know, I'm the social chair here uh, on campus. I would love to get uh, I would love to explain to you why. I should go to school for free this year. And I, and, and that was the process. So I told them, I communicated every single value that I'd done for them. And then I also told them, I was also willing to work for you, you know, for the remaining of the scholarship. And then I convinced them to give me a $5,000 scholarship. That was a two year, that was a two week process, but it eventually, I was able to eventually get everything paid off. And, and, um, and it was all through the mindset. And that was, Right then and there, I, I realized that every single every single thing I had done happened for a reason. Whether it was the accident, whether it was losing a friend, whether it was starting a business while doing that, I was like, if I had decided to quit at that time, I would not be where I am today. And you and I, Carlos, have had conversations offline about different ways to support a business. Um, and you know, I, I, I was share with you recently the amount of work that you know you put definitely gets noticed. Um, an agency was finally able to reach out to me, and they said. Ty, we love you to go into corporate environments and be that bridge for cultures and be that bridge for millennials and baby boomers. So all the hustling eventually paid off, but it was it was through this this series of downtimes that I felt like Carlos was like, we have to really talk about all this stuff that nobody talks about. Um, you know, whether it's being broke, whether it's being broke, whether it's losing friends, whether it's losing family, whether it's getting divorced. The road to the top is not necessarily a, a linear straight line or a vertical line, but it's one that, you know, that embodies a culture of hustle. And we wanted to really embody that. So, you know, I mean, you and I have unique journeys, unique parents, um, unique backgrounds, and we come from different cultures. But 
the thing that unites us is the hustling. Uh, so I hope I didn't share too much information well, there, but that that's, that's a little great. bit about kind of how I got to to where I am now, where I'm consulting and also um, in the process of building my business as well. Yeah, you know, I think, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're always hustling along the way, right? And even myself, you know, the, the hustle just, it evolves. Like as people, we mature, we change over time. You know, my hustle, gosh, five, six years ago is completely different than today. And, Absolutely. you know, my hustle five, six years ago was not sleeping at night because I wasn't sure where my next, where my next paycheck was going to come from to feed my family. And my wife can, can tell you, she can test to as a witness, dude, when I was, when I was in the grind trying to grow jobs, direct USA, man, there were nights where I would literally work throughout the night, drink coffee while my family was asleep. And I would just study social media. I literally studied how social media worked. I would sit back the same way today. I hear how people study things like Blab and Periscope yeah. and how that works. That was me back then with Twitter and with LinkedIn and with Facebook. And you're right, man. Like you get to a point where you, you almost want to give up because you get kicked in the ass so bad. And for me, there were so many times, again, making no money, not sleeping, where Absolutely. I would just sit back and just be like, I can't do this anymore. But you know what, dude? Every single time I wanted to give up, there was like a sign that would come to there's me. Always, that, that, there's, that's there's, always divine intervention. there's always like an email that comes through that next day. There's that phone call that comes through. There's that person right. that reaches out to you. And all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I'm going to keep going. Because that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. It, and it, it only happens when you push through. And it, people always ask me, we're going to talk about this. I'm going to ask you this question next. Uh, what separates hustlers from real hustlers? You know, what, what's the what's the separation there? And it, it's that ability to push through the difficult times. Like, the, you know, what is being broke in a foreign country, not knowing where your next rent. The worst story that I have last year was going to the grocery store at 1 a.m. to try and get gummy worms because I have a sweet tooth. And having my credit card declined and not knowing that I, I, I was overdrafted, that I was overdrafted. I was like, I didn't even know that I was that broke. But then you realize, like, you have to find a way. Um, and, and, you know, like you said, like your dad said, there are two options, up or down. And it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's what you decide. I mean, the only way, the only direction from down is up. So you, you, if you can stand up and, and look at yourself in the mirror and push through, more often times than not, good things happen. And, and those do build character. And, and you do learn from, from that type of stuff. And even if it's, if it's making a mistake, it's, you own up to them and you learn how to be a, a better person. So, but I, I said, what separates hustlers from real hustlers? What, in your opinion, separates, uh, separates hustlers? Well, I, I think we've already, we've already scratched the surface on it. It's not giving up. Yeah. And, you know, I, I put it to you, you know, very bluntly. I at, uh, when was it? Was it 2010? I was at a point where I hadn't earned income for a year. Yes. And blew through all my savings, um, had my cars repossessed, my house was under foreclosure, had literally not a dime to my name. And you want to talk real talk? This is real talk, dude. And, yeah, that is real talk. <laughs> and, and the power was cut off in my house, and I was driving all over Jacksonville looking for a handout. And I was like, you know what? This is bad. Like, I am literally one step away from being completely homeless and being out on the streets with the wife and kids. And, yeah. you know, I've got, call it pride, but I, I've never wanted to ask my parents for anything. I've never wanted to ask them for a handout. So never once did I go to my mom and dad and say, hey, you know what? Like, I'm hurting right now. Can you help me out? You know, bullshit. It was about, I set out to do something, which is to help people find jobs. It was to help America get back to work. And it's yeah. funny because I'll look back at my YouTube videos from that era. And it's like, man, like that kid, okay, that I see back then inspires me now. Like, that's the whole crazy dynamic thing about this. I see myself five, six years ago, and I get inspired by watching my former self. Because now I feel like almost I have it too easy. I work for a company. My hustle nowadays is selling social media strategy to C-level executives, okay? And it's a completely different type of hustle, right? But back then, man, the moment that really hit me was that. It was driving around Jacksonville, looking for a handout, and then... I saw a movie called The Pursuit of Happiness with uh, Chris Gardner. Um, you know, Will, Will Smith. Smith portrayed. Yeah, Will yeah. Smith portrayed the life of, of Christopher Gardner. And the scene where he's in the bathroom at the subway station with his little boy, at that moment, dude, I bawled in tears when I saw that because I was, going, 
very similar. And yeah. that is the moment where I said, you know what? I'm not going to give up. I got yeah. this far into it. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep going forward. And you know what, dude? Uh, a little over a year later, Win Dixie, which was a client of mine at the time, wound up hiring me and paying me a very good salary to go work for them. And to me, like that was that moment where I was like, you know what? I really made it. I graduated from all this. And if I could go from where I was back then and survive and get through it, dude, unless you take the air out of my lungs, ain't nothing going to stop me or kill me, bro. That's real talk. Yeah. And, and and that 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 is that's the thing. And that one thing I, I do or want to say that you brought up is hustle it varies from everyone. And, and hustle is something that's dynamic. It changes all the time. You get to a point. I was listening to a podcast earlier this morning, and um, and she was talking about how she has that differentiation or disruptive mindset in the sense that she goes on to you know she what if she feels like she's reached the pinnacle of something. She always feels like she has to jump off and even reinvent herself to even to be even better. So in your case, your hustle led you to Win Dixie, led you to somewhere else, and you you realize, okay, I'm here. What else can I do to hustle my way to an even better direction? And it, it's always that way where you you're never getting complacent. You're always yeah. different, and you're finding a way to better yourself and also better better the environment. I, the, I want to stress that the hustle is not going to be all gloom and doom, broke, all that. You know, some of the guests are going to have, you know, whether it's that hustle to be brave enough to, to, to do what they actually want to do and not what, not what society tells them to do, whether it's hustle to break through the glass ceiling. It's always, um, there's always some sort of hustle that you have. And that culture is what we're trying to cultivate in the sense that, you know, there are, you know, there, people always say there are no excuses, but there are no excuses if you really stare at yourself in the mirror and you make sure that you're there. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> I, and, and I love the fact that you're telling stories. So one of the things that's going to be a fabric throughout the, the episodes and, you know, is that we're going to have people tell stories and real life stories. And we're going to have the guest on the show right. and the people listening say, ask questions that they, they have with, whether it's personal, it's professional, uh, you know, these are all part of what the culture is to be a hustler. Honestly, there is no, there is no path to overnight success. No. Anyone who tells you that there is, is completely full of shit, if I can say that on our podcast. Man, it's your show, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the God's honest truth. There is no path to overnight success. you got to grind. you got to hustle, okay? And you have to put in the sweat equity and put in your dues, man. You take a look at any successful entrepreneur, male, female, regardless of, of race or religion or what have you, wherever they come from, everyone has a story to tell. And everyone's yeah. story is usually a starting at very humble beginnings. Somewhere there was a moment in their life that inspired them, okay? And there's that trigger effect. So again, like for me, the trigger effect was watching Pursuit of Happiness and being literally dirt broke. Everyone has that. And that's what I love about what we want to do with our show, where we want to take this. So we want to spotlight these people. We want anyone who's watching or listening to be able to walk away and say, you know what? Wow. If this male or female can do this, what's stopping me? What's holding me back? Absolutely. And, and, it, and I'll use several examples of hustlers, real life hustlers that have made an impact in my life. When I was 11, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Nigerian, obviously, and I'm, I'm an African at heart. I was in Burkina Faso at the time, which is a country in West Africa. Uh, Nelson Mandela. I had just come across one of his biographies, and and it was just eye opening to me. I mean, here was a guy that at the time, you know, he, he's known as the father of Africa, but he had spent 27 years in jail, and I was fascinated by his story. And and I remember having that calm moment, asking myself what I wanted to do, uh, to do, you know, back then, and it was to make people happy and provide value. I just didn't know what it was, but I read his story, and I kept thinking to myself, one day I want to be able to have a platform that does that. And, and I, every time I, I go through a difficult period, I always go back to that time because whenever you're young and you're young, you, you don't have all these limitations. You just think you can do everything, right? Yeah. You're like, the world is your oyster. And we get older, we become like realistic mm -hmm. that I'm putting quotes uh -huh. here because we think ah, society says, oh, yeah. what, that you shouldn't do that. So I always try to remind myself of that because Nelson Mandela was a real life hustler who after 27 years in jail, decided to still do, to pursue his dream and decided to even buck convention and say i'm going to um you know i'm going to try and unify my country and work with people that put me in jail uh oprah the other one i was one of those guys that would run back from school to actually watch an oprah episode because i was fascinated by 
a talk show host who was giving people a platform to be the best version of themselves. Right. And, you know, that was what got me into the media game. Uh, you know, Oprah's, Oprah and Ariana Huffington, the reason why I actually fell in love with media, because I said, if you give people a platform to tell their story, the impact that that can make is tremendous. Because if I'm getting benefit from all the people that Oprah is, is going on, and this is someone that but didn't finish college as well. She was like accredited of two shy, I think. Um, and she, you know, she was, she was a black woman with her parents who, who was abused, you know, in, in several situations. And she... You know, now she's the most powerful woman in the world. But that was all through deciding to go through unconventional paths and believe in right. herself. And, and all these, the fabric that unites, you know, the stories is just the fact that someone believed in themselves, put in the work, built relationships, mm-hmm. relationships, and, and, and had an invested time in, in, in doing those three things. Um, it's always something that fascinated me. So I, I always said if I could do that as well. Um, it, it, it would be something that I wanted to do. And, and I think that's one of the things that, that connected you and I together. I, I, I know, you know, we've been talking about this for a while, but I think at the core, everybody wants to connect. Um, mm-hmm. And they want to be able to find, they want to be able to believe in themselves, even though they admit it or not. So we, um, you know, we hope that we can give that to you. And uh, yeah, that's why Carlos and I are, are combining our, our resources here together to, to really provide value. Well, I, th- I think it's important to, to be a part of a movement. And a lot of people, they get, they get twisted. They want to be the movement. Everyone talks about being the agent of change. And you know what? It's fine to be an agent of change, but it's about the movement. It's about the people that you surround yourself with. And you talked about Nelson Mandela and Oprah. I'm going to give you two people that have inspired me in recent times. And the first is LeBron James. And I know you're a sports fan too, and you're a big LeBron oh, fan as well. That was the third one. Sorry. But I tell you, LeBron James, the reason why he inspires me is because LeBron James is the greatest probably athlete on the planet. Mm. LeBron James cannot win a championship by himself. LeBron James, Mm. even though he's the best in his game, he does not have the accolades to go ahead and prove it in terms of championships because he depends on the people around him to make him even better. At the same time, using the Miami Heat as an example – as you know, Ty, I'm a big fan. LeBron James, anytime he goes to a team like he went to the Heat, he makes the people around him better. It's the Michael Jordan effect, right? Yeah. So you have greatness that you instill in others, but others also have greatness that they instill in you. And when you surround yourself with the right people, now all of a sudden you're creating a movement. And let me tell you something. A team of 100 is a lot more powerful than an army of one. And yeah. – you know, so that's so LeBron James, again, guy that I look at, always looking to refine his craft, always trying to be the best. He doesn't accept being number two, number three. He's always trying to no. be and has a great work ethic to back it up. The second, and this is not for political reasons, but it's Barack Obama, President Obama. And again, this is not for political reasons, but when you take a man who, as you know, is colored and <laughs> Yeah. No. And he, I didn't know that. <laughs> and he is able to persevere through the you know racial divide that has existed in our country, okay, going back generations to be our nation's first black president. To me, that's inspiring because hey, I'm Hispanic. My parents migrated from Havana, Cuba before I was born. Okay, so I'm Hispanic. And Barack mm-hmm. Obama again can can stand out rise above any adversity to actually be a president of a country. And what is stopping me from being the first Latino president of the United States or my kids for that fact of the matter. So again, I look at figures like this as they're, they're polarizing. They have something about them that I see their qualities and I want to have those same qualities. And again, like you said, use your difference to make a difference, follow that same path. Yeah, no, and 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 you know we hope I know we, we want to make this an intro, so we we just wanted to give you an insight to who we are. Uh, well, I guess who we are, not where we're still alive. Who we are, and um and just kind of why we you know we decided to do this, and you know I know it's um it's going to be weekly, and we want to make sure that we that you get to at least know your hosts. Also, Carlos, did we want to ask them questions? I don't know if one did it on record or off the record, but. Um, to sort of take suggestions for guests or 
things they want us to talk about and things like that? So a couple of things to call out in terms of um, how we are putting our show out there. You can watch Tayo and I on Blab every Saturday. We're going to be recording our show. Think of it as a live studio audience. So if you can hang out with us on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, based on where you're living, you'll be able to see Tayo and I record the Hustle Culture podcast live. We'll also have the Hustle Culture podcast on iTunes. So make sure that you subscribe to us on iTunes. Leave us a review. Anyone that you want to see as a guest, whether it's here on Blab, feel free to drop it in the comments or even... When you write a review for us on iTunes, whoever you want to see as a guest, let us know because we are going to reach out to them. And on that note, Tayo, who do you want to see as a guest on the Hustle Culture podcast? Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> Who's I, 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 let's say, let's say, right, first of all, you know, you already know who my favorite athlete of all time is. It's the guy you mentioned, LeBron James. But let's let's, let's go Le, Le, LeBron. But I would love to see uh, Oprah or Ariana Huffington or even um, uh, Marie Forleo. Funny enough, um, I've followed her, her career, um, her journey to being a Fortune 500 company herself, and I think she's a definition of hustle. And, and Natalie agrees, Marie Forleo. But yeah, if I could get those three, I mean, you know, but you know, Marie Forleo, LeBron James, LeBron James, and, and um, you know, any of those other. Oh, and Oprah, that'd be great. That's what's up, man. I would love to get the man, the myth, the legend, Gary Vaynerchuk. King of Hustle. Uh, I'd love to get him on the Hustle Culture Podcast. So, Gary, if you're out there listening, Tayo and I would love for you to join us. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, yeah. I, I also, there, there's two other folks I'd love to get on that I, I consider hustlers in their own regard. And, and one's Mark Cuban. So, again, kind of staying with the LeBron, the NBA thing, I'd love to get Mark Cuban on here. And, uh, yeah. hey, love him or hate him or leave him, but Donald Trump. Um, he's someone I'd love to get on the Hustle Culture podcast. You want to get Trump on the podcast? I want to get him on here. I want to get him on here. Every, that would break, break here every part. During the race next year. That well, we, Hey, look, dream big, right? That would break every... I mean, I think people would just tune in to see what he has to say. So, um, no, no, no. He, that would break blab, like Natalie's saying. Natalie says we'll break blab. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> In fact, we are going to make it happen. We are going to send tweets out to everyone that we want to come on to the Hustle Culture podcast and we need your help. So make sure that you retweet it, follow hashtag hustle culture. We uh, also have a Twitter account, which is at bring the hustle. So be sure to yes. follow that as well. And uh, personal accounts at Tyo Roxon, And he is at Carlos Gill, 83, 83. So, you know, you know, please let us know. We're easily accessible. Let us know what questions you have. I see Martin already, Martin and, uh, uh, Natalie already sharing ideas on the topics they want to talk about. So, and Sharon, uh, so please uh, post hashtag hustle culture in your chat whenever you you have a question. We'll be monitoring that, and we, you know, we just want to thank you all for coming on and spending, you know, your 30, 40 minutes with us. We are doing uh we're doing a, an episode tonight. We have to shift things a little bit. I do apologize, that was my fault, but we have to shift things um, a little bit tonight. Uh, so there'll be an episode, the fifth one, I believe at 7 p.m. Eastern with uh, with Mauro. Um, and he's an interesting guy. He's, he's, he's got several, a couple of businesses. He's got a job in the business. So um, we'd love you guys to, to show up if you can. Um, and if you can't, please catch the replay. It'll be, if you follow both of us, it'll be on one of our blabs. Um, and uh, we'll be putting out links for that, for sure. All right, Hustlers, for now, we are signing off. Hustle Culture, hashtag Hustle Culture. Make sure you follow us on Twitter with the hashtag as well as at bring the hustle. I am Carlos skill along with my co-host Tayo Roxon. Use your difference to make a difference.